overthrown by growing Islamist forces within their countries. The coalition that you are gathering will fall away from you, and you will have to pursue this war alone. I am afraid that this extended war may take a turn that you and your advisors least expect and involve America in the greatest of all wars, the war of Armageddon, in which no nation will be left out, including Russia and China. I believe there's a better way to win, a way that may appear more difficult, but you will be assured of the help of Allah God. The world is with you, Mr. President to pursue those who perpetrated this act against America. And your pursuit of the guilty parties is right and proper. However, Mr. President, it will take great courage on your part to look at America's policies with a critical eye and it will take even greater courage to break from the policies of the past and make a new beginning for this nation and the world. You have sent a strong signal to the world in your statement that the Palestinians should have an independent sovereign state. If you pursue this course with firmness and justice, the hotbed of terror in the Middle East will subside. The more fair, just, and equitable the solution to the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, the more the anger on both sides will subside and America will get the credit of settling this 56-year-old problem with justice thereby justifying America's position as the vicegerent of God. Mr. President, with the backing of the American people and the leaders of the world, if you re-examine policies that are unfair and change them, this signal to the world would bring the world and those so-called enemies and rogue states into your and America's sphere of influence. Since America is peopled by the people of the entire earth and all have contributed to America's greatness, then America, as the world ruler, has an obligation to the entire world. There is no need for a clash of civilizations. The Muslim world has much to learn from the West, and the West has much to learn from the religion of Islam. Creating the climate for dialogue will make a great future for America, and under her rule, a peaceful world can come into existence. There is no nation on this earth that I know of where I would have the freedom to speak as I do, or write the head of state as I am writing, and I truly appreciate this freedom. There is no nation on this earth that offers more in the way of freedom than this nation. However, unrighteousness is what we all should work to overcome because in the final analysis, it is righteousness that will make this nation truly great. I am appealing to you and imploring you, Mr. President, to orchestrate an end to policies that are unjust. I appreciate the privilege that I have to live in America. And with all her faults, there is no nation on this earth where I would rather live. However, this freedom that I enjoy under the Constitution lays on me a heavy responsibility, and that is to protect the best of this nation and to work to overcome those weaknesses of the nation that 
are causing her fall. I have traveled to many countries and have spoken to most of their heads of state and government. And not one of them has ever said to me that they hate the American people. But they all have said that they are displeased with America's foreign policies. I believe that I can be of service to you, our nation, and to all of those whom you believe are America's enemies. I believe that all of them can be made the friends of America. The whole world would like to have America as a true friend. But America can never be a true friend of the people of the earth until and unless she rules with the wisdom and the spirit of Allah God, which reflects itself in our love for humanity, our love for truth, and our exercise of the principle of justice. If America turns away from this principle of justice and does what she is doing because she has the power to do it, then Allah, who grants power, will take it from America and bring another people and another nation in her place. This does not have to be, but it will be based on how America conducts herself in this hour of her greatest trial and her greatest potential triumph. Mr. President, please think and pray over what I have written and speak to your advisors and close friends concerning it. I pray that Allah will grant you the wisdom to see that what I'm saying to you is good and is the way to triumph over the evil and hatred that is in the world against the United States of America. May Allah grant you the wisdom to see deeply into the Prophet's utterances concerning this time. And I pray that we will be triumphant over terror and become the friend of God in so doing. Best wishes for your success. Thank you for taking the time to read these words. I am your servant in the war against evil, Louis Farrakhan. I wrote him a second letter, October the 30th, 2002. After I made a speech on the seventh anniversary of the Million Man March. At that time, I told the audience and the American people that within three to six months, America will go to war in Iraq. And within six months, America was indeed at war. I warned him again in my letter of September the 30th. And I wrote, I'm just going to give you excerpts of this. There is a rising chorus of anti-war demonstrations in the nation. And by the way, these letters are also contained in this little booklet, Guidance in a Time of Trouble. You may read these letters and these press conferences in their entirety. But listen to this. There's a rising chorus of anti-war demonstrations in the nation and throughout the world. And it will intensify as you move toward war with the thought of occupying Iraq. The anti-war demonstrators will blame every death of an American service person and every death of an Iraqi citizen on you. And this will produce a crisis for your administration within the United States of America, as well as in countries throughout the world. I am writing to plead with you that there is a better way. However, the more you talk and the stronger you talk about regime change in Iraq, 
You paint yourself into a corner from which it becomes increasingly difficult to extricate yourself. There are times in history when men of conviction go against the tide of world thought and opinion, bringing suffering upon themselves to establish a new truth or a new idea. However, this is not that time for you. In my judgment, this is a time when the President of the United States must not only listen to his advisors and study their agendas, but he must listen to world opinion. If the President of the United States seems to show no respect for world opinion or for the thoughts of the members of the Security Council of the United Nations, then your actions will turn the nations of the world against you and against America. Your actions will also render the United Nations as an ineffective institution for future peacekeeping. Ancient Babylon was a city that caused all who traded with her to wax strong. But at a certain point, the neighboring nations turned against Babylon and she was destroyed and left as a sign. The book of Revelations speaks of a mystery Babylon that ancient Babylon was a sign of. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, my teacher and guide, said that America is the fulfillment of that mystery Babylon. Mr. President, you must study prophecy in order to beat it. Look at the nations to the north and south of you. Are they pleased with you, your administration, and your policies? Look at your friends in the Middle East. Are they really pleased with you, your administration, and policies? Look at your European friends and your African and Asian friends. The prophecy teaches that they'll take your money and whatever you offer, but they will hate you and ultimately make you de desolate. We are headed into a terrible time, and I'm writing this letter as a final witness of my deep concern for you and for the nation, believing, however, that you are bent on doing what is in your heart with respect to Iraq and Saddam Hussein. Mr. President, if you do this, you will bring down upon America an increase in the divine judgment of rain, hail, snow, wind, earthquake, pestilence, and famine that is already being witnessed in the country. As you go about destroying other nations and their cities, you will bring this divine wrath on America and the American people and on American cities. Please. Reconsider your plans. May Allah guide you to make the right decision for this nation and for the future of the world. I am your servant in the war against evil. Louis Farrakhan. Now, brothers and sisters, you should ask yourself and the people of America and the world, why would God allow me to see the mind of the president, the mind of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the heart of the president. Why would God allow me to see that? Except that I might warn America that I am not guilty if she does not follow the guidance of the consequences of America's rejection of that which is right, proper, and just. Why did the president fail to heed such counsel? Either he never received it, or he was already committed to another idea. Now let's say he never received my letter, but let's prove the second point. He had another idea in his heart, he was listening to another drummer 
marching by that drum beat so he couldn't hear what 